Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Good morning, Big Square Roadroad.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of Chaga Coffee. With my C60 gummy, uh, time to get healthy. I know most of the country is frozen right now. Insane weather. Um, listen to me crying in California. Um, but I've been looking at the images of all the snow and freezing cold temperatures. Stay warm, my friends. Um, yeah. I had a great discussion last night on Palisades Gold Radio. Go check that out on, on Twitter. We talked about... Metals, mints, laws, premiums, and outlook. I uh, got a little of every perspective. It was great. It was a great discussion. Um, anybody who's invested in silver should read that, who doesn't uh, fully understand what's going on with the derivative market, with the mints, with the bullion banks. I mean, we went down every nook and cranny of the silver market. Um, it was good. It was a really good discussion. Go check that out. All right. Where are we today? Is the comic still open? Yes, the comics is still open. So they're still rigging. Nothing changes. Silver won't be set free until um, the comic shuts down. The criminal organization that runs it and the criminals that are in it. There's no reason to have massive, massive silver futures and options that set the price of silver. Silver is a, a commodity. It's a scarce natural resource that should be traded on a free market, not a rigged market. So... Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you other than the banks are running from the comics, gold and silver. You can see it in the volumes even now. Look at the, uh, let me see here. Look at the volumes just crashing. I mean, not too long ago, we were up at, uh, you know, half a million, uh, half a billion ounces traded every day. These are banks trading back and forth to each other, mostly run through uh, Virtue Financial, a high frequency trading company that controls this shit. Um, with the with the banks, the CFTC claims they have no idea what's going on. They're lying, um, but hey, this is what it is. Look at uh, yesterday, only what was it? Uh, Thirty seven thousand six hundred and sixty contracts. So that's what eighteen hundred eighty million, something like that, around that neighborhood. Um, hundred and eighty million ounces of futures and options. Um, got traded, which is really low considering, and all the banks are leaving. All the banks are leaving because they, I think they've been told, get the hell out. Let, we're going to let uh, gold and silver trade freely at some point, And we can't have, uh, any of our banks going down because of their derivative position. So I think by the end of the year, they'll all be pretty much out. Um, they're, they're hiding it pretty good. I mean, the, the OCC helped, uh, Bank of America hide their silver, uh, 1.2 billion ounce silver lease position. We believe it's a lease. Um, because now they have this huge gold position. It's probably neutral. That, I mean, it, great job covering up. Congratulations, OCC. Way to cover up data and, and not let anybody see what's really going on. But that's the way our market works. Really interesting. Somebody, somebody um, actually delivered 336 uh, contracts which is what, uh, 1.5, yeah, about 1. 1. 1.8 million ounces. Wait, uh, 1.65 million ounces. 1,650,000 1, ounces, right around there. Um, why did they wait till the 20th of December? Because they didn't have the metal. So we can, we can say, hey, who doesn't have the metal? Who, doesn't have the, who didn't have the metal at the beginning of December? Um, it's actually one of the largest... Um, Deliverer, deliverers of this month. So it's right here. BMO Capital, Bank of Montreal. Uh, just another bank. They probably got suckered into some crazy derivative with Bank of America and had to pay Bank of America back because uh, B of A took 118 of those contracts. Overall, if you look at the BMO Capital, Bank of Montreal Capital, it's, they're trading for their house account. This month is brutal for them. I mean, they've had to deliver over... 5 million ounces of silver. They're not used to that. Look at their, I mean, they barely have done anything. And they, and yet now they have to, at the worst possible time, deliver one over 5 million ounces of silver. Now I bet you they're part of the, the remaining, how much is remaining here? Uh, 727, so 3.5 million ounces. BMO, hey, 
what why are you playing with these guys? Why did you write this deal with Bank of America that came due by the end of the month? Um I think they can find the three million ounces, three point five million ounces if it's them. It'll be interesting to see if it if it really is them. I mean, it might just be an anomaly. It's not an anomaly. They owed this amount. Over five million ounces from a a non-silver type of bank. Did they structure it with crazy derivatives that go back to JP Morgan or back to B of A and, and it's a complete circle blank between the banks? Could be. Could be a lot of things. Um as a matter of fact, let's see if BMO was planning gold, because usually they'll offset their silver losses with gold wins is the way the banks do it. BMO capital. Uh it's fine. Gold. Silver and gold. I never look at gold features. Platinum. Palladium. Micro gold. I don't want micro gold. Copper. 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 Here they are. Comics gold features. Look for BMO. BMO. Look for any anomalies to see if they're offsetting it. RBC. Man, J.P. Morgan is massively in the middle of this gold stuff. I don't know why people... Well, J.P. Morgan customers, ex excuse me. I mean, look at all that. They dominate the market. All right, where's BMO? They might not be here. Hmm. There it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ha, <laughs> ha. I, don't, don't you love this? So BMO Capital pretty much does nothing. Oh, back in August, they did something. This is taking delivery of, uh, what is that, uh, 2,000 contracts times 100. So add two zeros, what, 2 million ounces of silver? That's a, of gold. That's a hell of a lot. Um, but look at it right here. Same with this month. 10 to 1, that's what they're doing. They play off each other. And it's all orchestrated by companies like... Uh, um, Virtu Financial so, okay here's what you do you take the hit for silver in December and we're going to give you that money back in the gold derivatives and that's basically what happened they they netted or netting this month and this is their house account uh, 1.2 I'll do the actual math on this one let's see uh, 3 plus the 674 or oh, sorry, one eighty-three minus six seventy-four. Uh, hundred and twenty, hundred and twenty, uh, thousand nine hundred, um, ounces. Times what's? Let's see what what is gold's price these days. 17, so say 1800. $127 million worth of gold they took delivery of. Net for December. That's how the game is played. It's a ridiculous game, but that's how it's played. Here, and it's all orchestrated out of probably, out, maybe out of the Fed, but definitely Virtue Financials in the middle of those two. Could be the Exchange Stabilization Fund, Rust and Benham. We, we tamped down. Okay, I, I was corrected on this. He didn't say we, the market structure tamped down the price. And that's illegal as well. It is illegal for futures and options to determine price. There should be a price taker. And he just exposed, the head of the CFTC just exposed that the way that futures and options work is that you can rig the price. Thank God silver didn't go over $30. What does that mean? All the banks went short when they were told to go short. It's pathetic. Um, but this is a pretty big deal for BMO, for Bank of Montreal. That little tiny Bank of Mar Montreal um, is in the middle of the silver wars now, and they're getting paid back via their gold. I think the whole thing's a joke. It's just ridiculous. So I'll, I'll be interested to see if they keep having to deliver and if it is BMO that has to deliver all of that. I'm sure they're freaking out right now because they can't find the the silver. Otherwise, they would have they would have paid up at the beginning of the month. So we're gonna watch that one. 
Um, as far as silver, what, where are they allowed? Where's BMO and J.P. Morgan and B of A and Rustin Benham and uh, Janet Yellen? Where do they want silver to stop? My guess is the same place it's, it started in the third quarter, which is $21, uh, just above $21, which is where the uh, 50-day and the 200-day moving averages are, are converging. That's what they're going to try to do. That's the rig point for the end of the year. They're going to try to get it there. Um, we'll see what happens. And then I don't even know what's going to happen next year. I do think that the, the banking cabal, the banksters within the banking cabal will – get out of silver completely. Um, and then it's left to the black rocks of the world that aren't regulated the same and it, same game, different day. And the CFTC does nothing. So, but we will see, we will see what happens there. Um, so keep an eye out for $21 silver on December 31st. If, if, if my guess is that, <laughs> cause there were one year contracts, uh, yeah, one-year contracts that Bank of America entered into, and they had 1.2 billion ounces of silver derivatives at the end of last year. So that means I think they got rid of them all. They'll get rid of them all by the end of this year, and that's why uh, Greg Coleman of the OCC decided to move gold into the reporting category of other precious metals um, to hide it, to hide what was going on with the silver contracts. It's, they're not that hard to read. It's just ridiculous that we have to go through all these bullshit to price the what to know what the price of silver is. Um, Eric Sprott had a great discussion with Craig Hempty, Turd Ferguson. Excuse me, Craig Turd Ferguson. I still love that name. I go by Bix. Go back to Turd. Uh, anyway, Eric is a brilliant guy, and silver always has been. Um, he's real excited about twenty twenty three. Big, big, big things happening. Go to Sprott Money. And um, you can check that out. It's in the blog section at Sprout Money. Really great. Both those guys are great. And they were some of the guys early on where we were talking about the manipulation when it was like completely off. You, can, you can't talk about manipulation. You know, you have to listen to Jeffrey Christian and the likes of uh, Jeff Curry who say, oh, no, no, there's no manipulation. That little guy freaking... I, you know, how the CPM group gets away with the fraud that they're doing, aiding and betting the, the derivative riggers. Jeff Christian still won't say that the gold or silver has been rigged, even though the DOJ came down on JP Morgan, the largest fine in history, and, and they agreed to it. What they didn't want to agree to is the conspiracy, even though we saw all the emails of the colluding traders back and forth with different banks. I mean, if Jeffrey Christian says there's no there's no rigging of the silver market like he's been saying, and everybody who thinks that has a tinfoil hat on, well, he's just either dumb or criminal. I don't think he's fully dumb, but he's told what to say, so I do think he's fully criminal. And I think he should be investigated uh, when all, all this is over into what part did he play in the manipulation of gold and silver. That's my opinion, though. We'll see. Uh, on the crypto front, really interesting, uh, Caroline Ellison is uh, singing like a canary, but here's the deal. And, and what we want to do, uh, both the guys, Caroline Ellison and, uh, I'll, I'll read you that in a second. Uh, where is it? Caroline Ellison and the other guy is uh, Mr. Wang. Well, they, they both are turning states evidence against uh, S. Sam Bankman fried The big question is, are the people who control Sam Bankman Freed going to go to jail? The likes of the anti Trumpers at Stanford, uh, her parents, or his parents, and the anti Trumpers at MIT, which is her parents. Um, and then who controls them? You get to Tether and the crypto cabal, and then the pedo cabal, and it just goes down the line. Are they going to get brought up on charges? Uh, I don't know. Something was blacked out. Something was blacked out in the uh, agreement letter that Caroline Ellison signed. Uh, by the way, it's seven counts. Each of these counts carries a maximum term of 20 years in prison. I don't know how many. I'm sure she got a sweet deal. I'm sure she won't be able to last in prison more than you know two or three years. So they probably gave her like two or three years. And then they'll, they'll say, okay, 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 um, 
you 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 can have bail and stay out of jail until like the last six months, and then she'll spend six months in some cushy jail, or she, or she'll get uh, suicided like Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know, I don't know. Or Jeff, you know, Jeffrey Epstein didn't die. We all know that, but it's all part of the same thing. And they're 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 gonna give her a good deal. Otherwise, she might sing about everybody. Not that Carolyn Ellison would probably even know that she's been abused all these years and controlled, but I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but that's seven counts. I mean, that's like 120 years in jail. Maximum 110 year, 110 years imprisonment. And she'll get a couple years. It's just, I mean, they don't need it. They don't need her to turn state's evidence to nail Sam Bankman freed. Nobody needs that unless she's turning state's evidence about other people involved behind the scenes, um, especially what went on with Tether and the $38 billion worth of Tether that they got for free. They didn't put up collateral of $38 billion, obviously. Um, you know, they're supposed to buy that Tether, and they didn't. It was given to them. It was created from thin air by Tether and then given to them. And then, so when they gave it back, there should be plenty of uh, paper trail of Tether giving back the $38 billion. So there should be $38 billion in FTX or Alameda if they had that much Tether legitimately. And that's gone. Maybe they, they gambled it away because their, their, their brilliant trading programs didn't quite work so brilliantly. I don't know. I don't know. Or it's hiding in a, a crypto wallet somewhere. You know, in Sam Bankman Fried's family account somewhere. Who knows? But good thing we have CFTC boots on the ground at the subsidiary Ledger X. I mean, I've talked about Kristen Johnson many times. She's basically a JP Morgan implant at the CFTC, another one. Um, <laughs> the CFTC is not here to protect you. CFTC is here to run cover for the cabal. And that's exactly what they're doing. So boots on the ground, that just cracks me up. Um, and they're saying that uh, Ledger X, which is the derivative trading arm of um, of uh, Sam Bankman Freed and FTX, supposedly, they, they're saying that's okay. Why? Because there's no real assets in a derivative uh, exchange. You're just trading literally back and forth, longs and shorts. You don't need real assets, whereas FTX, the exchange, you need real assets. Um, so I don't know what's going on with Ledger X. It's, supposedly it's all frozen. That means some of the bad guys have a lot of money probably in shorting some of these stocks, and they don't want to lose that money. They want, like, uh, probably, I would say Tether has a whole bunch of um, shorts that are going to pay off. So they don't want to get rid of Ledger X. Because that's their winners. They want to get rid of the losers so it doesn't look like it's their fault. And the whole thing's screwed. Anyway, that's what's going on. This is BixRoadToRoad.com. If you want to join the private road, just click on subscribe today. And we will send you the coolest silver coin ever made in the history of the world. The Ruta Lives coin with the hand-painted red heart. Um, love this coin. Anyway, go check it out. I think I'll play a song today. I attached my Santa song the other day. I'll, ta I'll attach it at the end of this. It's a classic. Goes way back. Hope you guys enjoy and have a Merry Christmas.